Hey everyone, greetings from Bernanol, from quarantine week number one here in the Czech Republic. Um, it has been quite a week here. Things are just changing every day. Um, unfortunately, numbers just keep growing here in Europe. So it's been tough to look at the news every day. I'm sure everyone is feeling that hit. Um, I want to take a minute and just kind of throw my positive thoughts and love to my Novotel family in New York. Um, I worked at Novotel New York for about six years and went through a lot together. Um, they are my family back in New York. So really sending all of my, my thoughts to you all right now. Um, the hotel industry is taking a massive hit. Um, as well as the restaurant and bar industry, of course. Um, so, you know, if you know someone working in hotels, working in restaurants, working at bars, give them a call, send them some wine, um, just check up on them, make sure they're doing okay. It has not been easy, and unfortunately, I think it's just gonna get harder. So, um, that being said, just reach out to your, to your friends who may work at a Marriott or a Hilton or Novotel um, or another property and, and just check up on them, make sure they're doing good. Um, so sending all of my thoughts to New York City right now. Um, my heart's with y'all, I'm sending it all from the Czech Republic. But before I get too emotional, um, I wanna talk about old wine today. So I have spent the past week kind of debating which winery I wanted to show. Um, and the answer became quite clear when I thought, you know, if this virus gets me, I'm going to go out drinking good wine, drinking old wine. And so that decision became clear. Um, I'm excited to talk about a winery today that I haven't spoken about before. Uh, it's Colby Winery. So Colby Winery, um, located in Pozdrani, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, it's, it's a village located in Mikulov. Uh, Colby Winery has an interesting little backstory. So Colby Winery was founded in 1997 by Oldrich Drapal, who is a winemaker at Sonberg right now, um, with the intention of making wines that were varietally characteristic of the region. So they planted Welch Riesling, Riesling, Pinot Blanc, um, other white varieties there. I think there are about nine in total and three red varieties. So they wanted to make wines that were age worthy, that were representative of the region and using more advanced viticultural techniques. And you have to remember that the Czech Republic was under communist rule for about 40 years. So during that time, there were a lot of restrictions and difficulty to make high quality wine, like in neighboring Austria, for example. So the mid nineties was a huge revolution in winemaking and things are still changing rapidly today. But these wines that I'm showing today are a 2009 and a 2010. So these wines have 10, 11 years of bottle age from South Moravia. So this just goes to show that high quality wine is made here, age worthy wine, is made here under the hands of knowledgeable and uh, high quality winemakers. Um, so uh, funny story about Colby Winery, how I kind of was introduced to them. Um, I went to a wine event for the V8 Mikulov. Uh, the V8 Mikulov is an association of about eight different winemakers from Mikulov. And I was introduced to their sales manager, uh, Josef Fleisser. So, we spoke a little bit, I tried some of their wines. Uh, of course, these were 2016, 2017 wines, not like the wines I'm showing today. And I really liked the quality of them. I thought they were clean and fresh and showed really nice uh, kind of terroir characteristics. So about two weeks later, I ran into Josef at Vinoteca Utri Knijat, uh, one of my favorite little wine shops in the city, um, where I picked actually both of these wines up. And Yosef and I made a bet. There was a 2009, I think, Welch Riesling. And I said, all right, I am so curious to know how Moravian wine ages in the bottle. So I'll buy it. If it's good, I pay. If it's bad, you pay. And if the wine is corked or just faulty, the Vinoteca will pick up the bill. 
So we shook hands, the wine was absolutely perfect, and it really got me thinking how Moravian wine can mature in bottle. So this video I wanted to show, uh, today I'm showing 2009 Rulanske Bile, Pinot Blanc, as we know it, and Rietzling Vrinsky 2010. So i um, really excited to show some old wine, show how Moravia can really hold up against the competition, especially in terms of bottle maturation. So a little bit about Colby Winery. So Colby takes its name from the Colby Forest that just is adjacent to the winery. Um, like I said, the, the village is Postrani, uh, which is named after uh, the Postrani steps in this village. So steps is not what we think of as steps going up, but a step is actually a huge expansive area of wild grasses and um, different uh, uh, fauna that has existed there for thousands of years. So included into this Pozdrani National Park, as what is protected national park today since 2014, you'll find almost extinct grasses, insects, uh, rabbits, earthworms, all kinds of creatures that exist only in this particular area. Like I said, this Pozdrani Park is protected by the Czech government. It is a national protected park. Um, it covers about 150 hectares of land, so about 400 acres um, would be the rough calculation. And so Colby lies just adjacent to it. Um, what this does is it inherently increases the biodiversity of any agricultural area around it, sheerly by this introduction of natural grasses, insects, bugs, aphids, um, what it may be. So Colby is quite unique in terms of its site selection um, in the Mikolov region. So um, the winery has changed hands a few times uh, since, of course, 2009. Um, the actual owner right now is JNT Banks Holding, um, so they also own Reiston Winery. The director of the winery is Andre Steskal. I, I, I apologize for my wrecking of your pronunciation of the name, Andre Steskal. Um, and the winemaker is Michal Cassetto, um, who is a winemaker here today at Colby and also has his own project, his own winery. Um, so these individuals have lived in South Moravia for years. They studied in Brno at the Viticultural University in Brno at Mendel University. Um, so they are all very well integrated into the wine community and they know their way around the winery. So going into today, um, starting off with 2009, I'll hold the label up here. Uh, so this is the Colby Rulanske Bile 2009. This is Vibier Zijos Nu, so meaning selection of grapes. Um, this wine sits at 15% alcohol, um, so I'm getting my groove on pretty early today. Um, but this wine is also labeled as a polo suke, meaning half dry. So inherently, by having that high alcohol content and a little bit more residual sugar in the wine, these wines can be really age-worthy. So this is the Rulanske Bile Pinot Blanc, um, and I'm really excited to sample it here with you all today. Um, so I picked out a piece of paper because the color on these wines are just really outstanding. Let's see if I can pick this up. So you've got a, a really deep lemon color on here. It's leaning towards golden. It's really almost there. Um, it's got a beautiful deep lemon color. The wine is clear. There's no apparent fault or haziness in the wine. Let's give it a smell. So it's like really like lemon preserves, baked apples, kind of this fresh baked pie dough, really doughy, really intense aromatics on the nose. There's a slight like grassy note to it as well. Um, not quite a fresh cut grass, but if you've ever walked in a field after it's rained and you smell that real fresh grassy note, it's kind of picking that up. 
There's a honeyed note, kind of a chamomile floral aspect to it as well. It's really been evolving since I opened it almost two hours ago. Um, I poured this glass with the intention of letting those aromatics lift to the top of it. And I am very happy I did that because it's, it's really singing. But again, that, that hibiscus tea, um, really floral aspect to this nose, it, it's, it's really inviting. Let's give it a taste. So I, I would still call this medium to medium plus acidity. It's, it's, it's just sucking in just a little bit. The sugar is still there. I can still taste that residual sugar, almost like a, an orange marmalade on the palate. Um, that sugar, that honeyness, that honeyed note is really coming through as well. But it's still bright and lively. The alcohol definitely is coating my mouth a little bit more. It's a little bit rounder, but beautiful. Like I said, honey, kind of marmalade notes to it. Um, I can't believe this wine is 11 years old and it is still showing beautifully. Plenty of acid, medium plus concentration. It's, it's still sitting on my tongue. It's, it's still showing that honey note. Um, it's leaning towards that baked fruit, kind of stewed fruit quality but it's not, it doesn't show any oxidative character. This wine is in really good condition, really holding up. Um, 2009 was kind of a transformative year for me. It's when I started at Novotel. So, um, you know, thinking about where I was 11 years ago and this wine is holding up beautifully, really gorgeous wine. Um, so that being said, the next wine I'm doing is Riesling Grinsky, or as we call it, Ryan Riesling. So this is a 2010 Posny Sibier, meaning late harvest. So this wine has 12.5% alcohol, a little bit more tame in the alcohol realm of things. It is a suke, meaning dry wine. Um, you might notice something about the labels of Colby. These are the old labels. The labels have changed since, um, I would say, the past five years. Don't quote me on that, but um, this is definitely the older version of the label. If you see Colby Wines now, they have this really graphic print that really pops with a, a big K and, and big block letters covering uh, the label. So quite different to what we see here in the older versions, um, but I'm one for tradition, so I really like the old labels. I think it's kind of classic looking. Um, so going into their Riesling Krinsky, this wine, although it's a year younger, it has a darker color. So it just goes to show um, wines don't mature in the same way, particularly with different grape varieties. So this wine, I would call this wine golden. So this is a much deeper concentration. Um, the wine again is clear. There are no faults or haziness in the wine. I'm gonna hold the two wines up. This is the Riesling Rinsky 2010. This is the Roulance de Bile 2009. So you can see that color contrast. Um, I love doing comparative tastings for this reason, to see the difference and smell the difference. Um, so going into there, Ritz Linkrinski. So I love old Riesling. It is uh, one of my favorite things in the whole wide world. There's a, a slight petrol note that this wine's picking up, but gorgeous baked stone fruit and apricot. There's a slight kind of cardamom note to it as well, a bit of floral notes, but a really raw honey character to it. Um, beeswaxy, baked apple, um, like a baked apple pie. And, and quite floral too, um, white flowers, which kind of surprises me considering the bottle age. But there are some underlying caramel notes and butterscotch notes as well. 
Again, I opened this wine uh, about two hours ago with the intention of having those aromatics lift. But yeah, a lot of caramel notes on there actually, picking up more and more as I swirl it in the glass. Let's give it a taste. Mm. This wine's acid is just popping. Medium plus acidity. Not quite high, but not quite like a Sauvignon Blanc, let's say, but this is, this is real great acidity for a 10-year-old Riesling. Nice weight and concentration on the palate. Again, I'm getting some of that yellow apple character. Not as much caramel on the palate as was on the nose, um, but this wine is also in amazing condition, a really stellar condition considering it's 10 years old. but there are some pear notes coming through. Really juicy and refreshing and bright. Um, can't believe I now have two bottles of 10 plus year old wine open in my fridge. I'm very excited to, to enjoy these. Um, I've got a little tin of foie gras that I picked up in Hungary. So I have a feeling that the two are going to be perfect pairs later on this evening. Um, so shout out to Colby, uh, you make great wine, and shout out to Vinoteku Tri Knijat for being open. Um, I think they're open during the week, kind of limited hours. Check in on their website. Um, I'll list it here. If you are interested in learning more about Colby wines, they are sold there, I know for sure, uh, in Brno. They also have a wine bar in Prague called Wine Bar Colby. So if you ever head to Prague, um, I think it's in the business district near Prague 3. So check it out. They have some archived wines there too. So you don't have to be in Brno to pick up their wines. You can be in Prague. Um, I'm hoping that some exporter finds this winery. Hint, hint. Um, these wines are gorgeous. And I must say, their, their more recent wines are, are very good too, but this just goes to show the aging potential is here in South Moravia. Bottle maturation is possible um, with stellar winemaking. So that being said, I hope everyone has some great wine at home to get them through the next few weeks ahead. Um, if you don't, give me a buzz. Um, I can point you in the right directions. Um, Again, shout out to Novotel, shout out to everyone in New York. My parents are both there. I have warned them they need to stay home. Um, it's just been a tough week. So enjoy some great wine, pick up something old, open it up, smell it, let me know what you think. Um, and I hope everyone stays safe. Cheers from Bruno. Cheers to Colby Winery. Keep making that great wine and I will see y'all soon. Take care. Cheers.